Welcome to Sports Flavor with Greg Praver. It's an exciting time of year in sports. The NCAA Final Four is in the home stretch, the NBA and NHL playoff races are heating up, and the start of the MLB season leaves many fans energized for a fresh new start in 2014. Washington Redskins picked up star wide receiver Deshaun Jackson from the Philadelphia Eagles. Last season, the 27-year-old scored nine touchdowns, matching his career best, along with having 1,332 receiving yards, a career high. The Eagles made a bold move and released him last week, leaving fans baffled. Jackson's talent rounds out Redskins receiving core Pierre Garçon, Santana Moss, and Andre Roberts. A surprising start to the Final Four in Dallas has already contained upsets. In the first game of the set on Saturday, number seven seeded Connecticut Huskies faced the heavy favorite, Florida Gators. Down 16 to four soon after the game started, the Huskies quickly cut the deficit to one and took the lead a few minutes later, and it was smooth sailing from there. Forward to Andre Daniels had 20 points and 10 rebounds, and guard Shabazz Napier had 12 points, six assists, and four steals. Patrick Young had 19 for the Gators, and Casey Prather added 15. This win for the Huskies was the latest in their four impressive tournament upsets, beating Villanova, Iowa State, and Michigan State. The team outscored the Gators 38-31 in the second half to advance to the national championship. After the Wildcats and Badgers came off of wild upset victories in the Elite Eight versus Louisville and Arizona respectively, the world knew that this was going to be a good battle. The teams traded leads throughout, and then the underdog Wildcats advanced to the championship game with a win. They shot 50% from the field and made Badgers star Frank Kamiski a non-factor. He only attempted seven shots and had eight points. Wildcats guard James Young had 17 points, and forward Julius Randle contributed with 16. The national championship game takes place on Monday night between Kentucky and Connecticut. The Tampa Bay Lightning had a week of ups and downs. The week started out well, and then they played their hearts out against the Montreal Canadiens, battling for home ice advantage in the first round of the NHL. The result of the game? a 3-1 Lightning win. They trailed 1-0 after a Brendan Gallagher goal, but then connected on three shots that came from Ryan Callahan, Tyler Johnson, and Alex Kalorn. They secured a spot in the 2014 playoffs with that home win against Montreal. It's very likely that these two teams will meet in the first round of the playoffs. Good news, Lightning clinched. Bad news, the rest of the week was ugly. The Lightning lost an unexpected win at home against the Calgary Flames and gave up two quick goals early in the first period. That led to a 4-1 defeat, spearheaded by Mike Camilleri. The Flames came to the Tampa Bay Times Forum and upset the Lightning, hurting their chances for home ice as the Canadians won Friday and Saturday. Things got worse for the Lightning. They hosted the red-hot Dallas Stars, who are battling for a playoff spot in the Western Conference. The Lightning gave up two goals by forward Jamie Benn in the first five and a half minutes of the game. Jamie also added an assist, which led to the Stars winning 5-2. Tyler Sagan added a goal for Dallas as well. The Lightning fought back in the second period, outscoring them two goals to none, but it wasn't enough. The Canadians currently lead Tampa Bay by four points and the tiebreaker advantage should have come down to that. The Lightning have a difficult four-game schedule to finish the season, facing teams that are fighting for either playoff seeding or for their playoff lives. They face the Toronto Maple Leafs at home on Tuesday. They host the Philadelphia Flyers on Thursday, along with the Columbus Blue Jackets on Friday. And then they travel to Washington to play the Capitals in the season finale. They must keep an eye on the Detroit Red Wings, who are five points behind them for the third spot in the Atlantic Division, with four games remaining. If the Red Wings overtake the Lightning, their most likely opponent would be facing the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first round, but it's more likely that they will play the Canadians on the road. The 2014 Major League Baseball season 
following the two-game series in Sydney, Australia, began this week. Some storylines include the Seattle Mariners, who have struggled every year since 2001, starting out 4-1, the, he the hitting-heavy Baltimore Orioles starting off poorly at 1-4, and, and Red Sox outfielder Grady Sizemore hitting a home run in his first game back from injury since 2011. The New York Yankees avoided a three-game sweep to the lowly Astros to begin the season. The Miami Marlins and San Francisco Giants both started off 5-1, and, and Arizona Diamondbacks left fielder Mark Trumbo starting off the season by hitting four home runs in eight games. Recently, New York Mets first baseman Ike Davis hit a walk-off grand slam against the Cincinnati Reds and the surging Atlanta Braves won their first two games in Washington against the Nationals, who are favorites to win the National League East. For the hometown Tampa Bay Rays report, they split the four-game series at Tropicana Field against the Toronto Blue Jays, along with winning the first two games out of three versus the Texas Rangers at home. They have gotten tremendous production from David Price and Jake Odorizzi, who each had quality wins, and Evan Longoria and Matt Joyce, who have both hit above 350 in the first week of play. Following Sunday's series finale against Texas, they head to Kansas City and then Cincinnati for two three-game series. After their first six games, they are at four and two. The Cleveland Cavaliers have been on a recent surge as they push to get the Eastern Conference's final playoff spot. Their chances took a major setback after they lost to the Atlanta Hawks on Friday. They went into that game with a record of 5-2 and two in their last seven, with defeats over the New York Knicks at MSG, the Toronto Raptors, along with the Indiana Pacers. With the Cavs' loss to the Hawks, it's realistic that after the Charlotte Bobcats clinched a playoff spot and most likely the seventh seed, the eighth seed will belong to the Hawks or Knicks. The Hawks lead the Knicks by one game, but the Knicks own the tiebreaker as of now, should the two teams tie for the spot. The Hawks have an easier end-of-season schedule as the Knicks play at Miami, they host Chicago, play Toronto twice, and they play Brooklyn. The Miami Heat have finally caught up to the Indiana Pacers for the Eastern Conference's top seed. They, have, they are currently tied for the spot, and Miami has won 6 of 10, while the Pacers have won 3 of 10. Dirk Nowitzki and the Dallas Mavericks are in the mix of a four-team playoff battle in the Western Conference. Three of the following teams, the Golden State Warriors, the Mavericks, Memphis Grizzlies, and Phoenix Suns, will make the playoffs. The Mavs were the odd team out for the last few weeks, but have recently stepped up their game, defeating the Oklahoma City Thunder and then the Los Angeles Clippers in Los Angeles. The standings are as follows. The Warriors are a game and a half above Dallas for the sixth seed. The Mavs are a one, one half game above the Grizzlies and Suns for the seventh seed. The Grizzlies currently own the tiebreaker for the eighth seed over Phoenix. There are six games left for most teams, and a lot could happen in those final games to affect the standings. That's all for Sports Flavor with Greg Praver this week. Thanks for watching. Thank you.